Lambus Racing. This is Aaron, our in-house tuner. Uh, this is our first episode of what we want to call English Racing's Tech Talk, where we talk tech, parts, knowledge, uh, anything you guys want to hear. Anything automotive, anything you guys want to hear talk about. Um, this is our first episode next week. Um, we'll uh, answer a viewer question or two. Uh, so please feel free to uh, send those in if you want to. If you got a question or something you've been uh, pondering, send it in. It'll stay anonymous. But uh, right here we have an ACD computer, what looks like a Super Nintendo game cartridge with some brackets on it. And uh, I'll let Aaron take it away on what this is and where did it originate and all that good stuff. So take it away. Okay. ACD is the active center diff in the 05 EVO 8, the EVO 9s, and the EVO 10. So as many of you know, what it is, is it's the center differential that is biasing power front to back. In an ACD car, it has clutch packs that have hydraulic pressure applied to vary the amount of bias towards the back. It can never exceed 50-50, but in some cases, the car can be front-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive. So, this Nintendo GameCube cartridge thing is the actual ECU that controls how the hydraulic pump is applying the, the pressure. Where did the uh, where did the tuning side come from? The tuning side was actually uh, developed by somebody that I've become friends with. His name's Sabin. Uh, he's European. He uh, had worked for a, a company and was doing a bunch of rally cars. He figured that he he needed to know how to interface with it. He knew the factory could, and he spent the time to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. So that was how the the interface side started. Uh, how long did English, I guess, uh, spend developing this thing? Well, before we actually released a prod, uh, product, we had two years worth of development time in, in coming up with a base map, uh, if you will, something that was going to work on a lot of cars, but we, we covered a lot of different cars. Uh, originally, we had three autocrossers, two or three autocrossers. Uh, we had two or three circuit guys road racing. So while I wasn't at the autocross days, I was at the track days. Uh, doing support, getting driver feedback. We also had street cars that we were testing this in to cover as many bases as we could. Now is this something your average Joe that daily drives the car can do or do I have to be a race car competitor or whatever guy to run one of these tunes? That's a great question, As I, I think everybody is going to benefit from this okay. because we all drive our cars uh, fast. We, get, we find a section of road that you know, we like. Maybe it's near our house, maybe it's on the way to work. Uh, while obviously if you're using it in competition, that's it's really what this is meant for, but anybody is going to enjoy it. What, is it. what does it do, I guess? I mean, what does it do for the feel of the car? What, uh, so, know, am I going to notice it right away? Or you're going to notice it instantly. Okay. Um, and the reason is, is kind of what we talked about before. The, the factory tune on these things, I'm not going to say it's poor, it, it does what it's supposed to. But it, it does have an understeer. So you're going to get in the car, and I do it a little bit differently than most people. I feel that there's really only need for three maps. Um, and then I set snow as what your old tarmac setting would be. Okay. It's more aggressive than that, but I start there because obviously that's the low one. And that's kind of more the street. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to let the wife drive the car, whatever. Your dad's going to get in there. You're going to go in, it's going to feel better. But it's more the daily commute setting. Now the next one up, obviously, is gravel. Uh, that's more track oriented, or if you're autocrossing and conditions are bad, it's wet, it's dusty, whatever. Um, where you need a little bit of oversteer, but you are traction limited. The last one, of course, is going to be tarmac there at the top. That's going to be the high grip, whether you're road racing or your high grip autocross. That's, that's the one that's the most aggressive. That's where you will have noticeable throttle oversteer because of how the center diff works. So on a daily driver, it's a snow setup? Uh, for the most part. Um, the reason I suggest that is if you go to the full aggressive, if you've ever had an older Mitsubishi, I, I know you have, uh, the old DSMs, one mod that people would do is they would weld the center diff. What that's gonna cause, that, that's an example of zero give. You're going to get binding, uh, your tires are going to chirp a little bit, you're going to kind of hear some scrubbing noises at low speed. It's, it's hard on the axles, especially if you're off camber and you're, you're turning sharp. That's why I don't suggest tarmac for daily use. 
you're all big boys and girls, if you want, run it. But know that it, it can accelerate where. It's really meant for competition on that one. And competition, you're moving fast and you're trying to win, right? I mean, sure. So you're you're gonna make some you're gonna make some sacrifices. High speed, you're gonna get away with more anyway. Um, so yeah, for the street, I normally recommend snow or gravel rather. Than I guess where is this something that somebody needs to bring the car in first to do it? Um, where is it in the car? Is it hard to get to? What's the procedure? Uh, the procedure is if you're local, yes, just bring the car in. Um, you can see that there's one little 10 mil bolt here. Now, if we were to, to look at this Evo 9, it's on the passenger side on the passenger foot, uh, footwell, it's up in there pretty tight. Uh, it can be difficult to get to. You have this 110 mil bolt um, that you kind of have to finagle around. Definitely unplug it first. You can see you got two plugs here. Because it's never been unplugged, it's not gonna come out easy the first time. You're gonna have to fight it. Uh, you might cut up your knuckles, just let you know. Uh, I usually take the glove box out so that I can see what I'm working with and kind of you know get just an extra little bit of room. Um, if you're not able to stop by, you don't live in Washington or Oregon, you're not here for a tune anyway, what you're going to want to do is pull it out, put it in a USPS box, UPS, whatever your preferred shipping method is, and send it to us. Now, very common question I think that I, I want to cover before I forget is your car will continue to operate. I was going to ask you, can I still keep driving the car? Yes, you can. You can keep driving the car. You're going to have the lights on the dash. It's going to be flashing at you. It's annoying, but the car is still going to function. You have zero ACD. That's the only difference. So if you go to a drag strip and you were to launch it, you're going to be front wheel drive until the, the car starts to grab traction and then it'll, it'll come back to all wheel drive, like how the old DSMs were. Uh, but you can keep driving the car. It's not going to damage anything. So your car is not going to be down for you know weeks and weeks. Um, the, the process is very simple though. If you send it to me, however you ship it, let's say you overnight it, it's three day, whatever. The day I get it, I flash it, I put it back in a box. I actually hand it to As, As ships it back out the exact same way. So we can make sure that you have this with a minimum of downtime. Really, just how fast you ship it. If you ship it ground, it's gonna be two weeks. If you wanna overnight it, you know, it's expensive, but that's up to you as well. Awesome. Well. That's what this little guy does. That's what we do. We'll have everything listed in our services uh, on our services tab and our uh, on our website. Um, I'll take some close-up pictures and give a rundown of the removal just so you can see um, firsthand. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our uh, social media links and uh, write us. What do you want to know? What do you want to What do you want us to talk about? What do you want us to go into detail? Um, this is almost your channel as well. So we're, uh, we're excited to see what you want to talk about. That's right. We kind of have decided you guys will help to determine the, the format, but there's going to be a, a product or uh, some facet of tech that we're going to cover, but then we're always going to take the time to answer at least one question. If we have time, multiple questions. We'll, just uh, what you guys we'll plan to do a, uh, basically a user question at the end of every uh, episode. We plan to do weekly episodes, so uh, we look forward to... Uh, See you guys next week. Take care. Later.